Hey folks, welcome to the Everyday Millionaire Mindset Matters podcast. Stephanie. Hey, hon. You're back. I'm back from China. China, how'd you do? Oh, well, you know, okay. Gold medal. We got first, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So we had four teams out of six oh. in the Grand Prix final, which means we had more than half the field. And then uh, the Americans, Maddie Chalk and Evan Bates, skated away with the gold. Only the gold this time. You didn't own Only the, the gold. <laughs> Top six the teams in the world, though, and we had four of them. So that's a pretty good <laughs> ratio. That's pretty great. And what was this uh, competition called again? NGK or something? NK no, NG. this is the Grand Prix final. This is all of the Grand Prix. The winners, the first and second place of all the Grand Prix. There's six Grand Prix. It's like the World Cup of skiing or swimming. In figure skating, it's called a Grand Prix. And whoever wins first and second earns their way to the Grand Prix final, which is the most prestigious of the Grand Prix. Uh, yeah. It was an incredible event. And we had four out of the six teams qualify. Well, good for you. Congratulations. Well, you're home now, and uh, we've really not had that much time to sit down and connect. We've been busy doing what we're always busy doing sometimes. But uh, after this podcast, hey, we'll, we'll get caught up a little bit on the podcast. How's that? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so how are you? <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Yeah. How was your week? Okay. So we got a few things to get caught up on and uh, talk about, which in this particular podcast, I want to talk about critical thinking. Now, an interesting topic, and I'm thinking about, you know, I always go back to what your athletes do in a week of competition and the critical thinking that really the coaches have to put in place. Like there's a lot of thought that goes into it. There's a lot of preparation, and then there's a lot of critical thinking and strategy that goes into it, aside from go out and skate your best. I mean, you're working in the background with, you know, working with thought process, the mental aspect of the game the technical coaches are doing what technical coaches do and of course the athletes are doing what they're doing so i have no idea if that's a any kind of a segue for critical thinking what's your thoughts well i think it is because when you think about what it takes to compete at the world class level there's way less champions in the world way less people that have made it to, to the top rung of sport, so to speak, or business, there's less people up there. So when you think about the pyramid, you know, less people at the top, and then there's more people as we go down. And in some ways, it takes more critical thought, more focus, more strategizing. And that's more, that's difficult. And when people are going up the ladder or trying to break the hierarchy, when it comes to being the best in the world, there has to be some strategy. And that is the foundation of critical thinking. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become? What's in my way? How do I combine the skills? How do I create the mindset to make better decisions and to make sure that I'm taking the course of action that I need to take in order to win? That's what critical thinking is. And i that's why I really love this topic. Well, when we look at critical thinking, you know, we're talking about world champions in the world, you know, world champions in uh, as athletes, you know, but we're also thinking about uh, world champions in business and careers, uh, being a world champion, uh, father, mother, you know, whatever that case may be, when we think and go from a, you know, champion's mindset, if you will, critical thinking plays a role in that. Now, we often talk about, you know, when we look at investing in real estate, there's a lot, or business, doesn't matter. We use the term, what's behind the curtain. So what do we mean by that and what has that got to do with critical thinking you know in business and careers in whatever we're doing there is critical thinking that's required and we take it for granted i think critical thinkers just think everybody thinks that way and the reality of it is is that actually they don't and it's why we're constantly hammering in the real estate investment network and in that real estate world is you know we had a whole segment called what's behind the curtain or what's behind the headlines, because a lot of people don't do critical thinking. They actually just read and look at the headlines and literally are making decisions driven by headlines, which drive emotion, which is the probably worst place to make decisions from most of the time. And so critical thinking is being able to lift the hood on those headlines, lift the hood on that information that you have, and then kind of look at it and say, is this real? What is, there's gotta be more to it than this. Let me kind of dig and unpack what this information is all about. So that would be the first kind of thought process around critical thinking is being proactive in terms of investigation and not reactive in terms of emotionally making decisions. Because critical thinking 
ultimately comes back to what are the decisions you're making? Big ones, little ones, whatever it might be, but you're using critical thinking to make those decisions. I think what you're trying to also say, Hun, is that when you look behind the curtain, you think about the Wizard of Oz, right? There was all the headlines and <laughs> all the things, all that Dorothy and the lion and the scarecrow and everybody was dealing with the Tin Man. But when you pulled the curtain back, there was just this little dude pulling a bunch of the, the levers. And that's what I find is happening right now, especially with certain media outlets where, you know, we've got people, I know people in my life that regurgitate headlines and they actually think they're talking about what's going on in the world. Instead of looking two or three paragraphs down, maybe in a news article, if you look at the headline and then you read the article and they don't match, then we're being gaslit <laughs> or there's a, a place where somewhere in there, people are trying to drive emotional decisions or they're trying to get clicks or they're trying to get people to buy uh, advertising or, or they're wanting to spread news that's maybe based in falsehoods or half truths. And I think what critical thinking does is it allows us to look down the paragraph you know, I always was taught, read the headline, don't believe it. If it interests you, then maybe take a look at the first paragraph, go all the way down the first column, read the last paragraph of the first column, go to the middle of the article, and then read the last paragraph. That's how in we were taught in school, if you can imagine, to critically think how to read a newspaper or a magazine article. If you're just reading the headline, you're just getting the emotional or you just try, you're getting the hook as to what people are trying to get you to consider. If you're watching the news, for example, and you're seeing the CNNs of the world, or I mean, I don't watch TV, so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's when I go to an airport, that's probably why I get nauseous, because I'm seeing all this stuff on the television and all the screens and monitors, and then I'm seeing all these words at the bottom. I remember used to be on the treadmill and read, trying to read all those words and thinking, this is really gonna create a whole lot of cognitive dissonance because you're seeing a picture, you're hearing a talking head say something, then you're seeing all these words down here, how on earth do you actually know what's going on so that you can make a decision in your life based on what's going on in the world? I find that the most frustrating. Well, I think, you know, it's the most difficult time that I can ever recall to, it's the most important time, but it's the most difficult time to engage in critical thinking for a lot of reasons. But let's just go back in my world anyways, let's go back four years just you know, leading up to the pandemic and the lockdowns and everything that went on for those two or three years while we were being locked down, to your point, so much politics, so much divisiveness, so much polarity, you know, society being ripped apart and, you know, hard lines being drawn, families being ripped apart. I mean, think about that. And, you know, we as uh, I guess as a couple, but as a family, our chosen family, I mean, we really were sitting back and just kind of watching things and doing our own research and making our own decisions based on the research that we did. But we weren't buying into the hype and the drama and we were watching it unfold and it was hard not to be drawn into it. But we weren't making decisions from a place of what any group of politicians, any group of MDs were doing or saying at the point in time when it was still so uncertain. And then, of course, with technology and when, you know, and then Musk buying, think about Musk buying Twitter, now X, and creating a platform where far more open. Uh, then we look at a prime minister in Canada who's added censorship. So critical thinking is becoming more important, but more difficult because how do you get information? How do you, um, I guess, unpack or look at the, how do you, how do you actually, I'll use the term fact check, although I hate that term, but how do you fact check? How do you really look at it and go, is this real? And when you start to look at the different social media platforms, the clickbait that is out there, the skill of which many marketing companies are able to work with, uh, the skill of which we look at our own mainstream media. And I guess, you know, I, I have opinions of it and I have had those opinions for a very long time, which now more than ever is what we'll call government owned or state owned media. So now whatever talking heads are out there, whatever headlines are out there, man, oh man, you have to look at it. Then you have to research it and you have to dig even deeper into what it is. All the point is, is that, when you're making decisions for your business, for your family, uh, for your life, your financial, I mean, you have to really 
work harder in terms of critical thinking. That's my view of it right now. And when I go back to that time that, to me, the fork in the road was with the pandemic and the lockdowns and the divisiveness in governments and, and globally that God created, what countries were doing and what other countries weren't doing. And I mean, it really got crazy. And I don't know that it's better other than maybe the dust is settled and the drama around it is just different. So I'll stop there. But I'm just saying is that it's so important to engage in critical thinking right now, but it's, I think, a very difficult time. It is. And I think what's happening, too, is that people are becoming less forthright when it comes to their opinions. And if they are doing some more critical thinking, or they're looking and being more observant, seeing what's matching, what's not matching. So you see one picture, like I was saying on the treadmill, you see one picture on the news, and then you see something else being written, or you see something happening in real life in front of you, but somebody's telling you something different. That dissonance or that distortion that happens in our minds, if we don't have that uh, quality, I call the observer trait, the quality of being able to step back, like you said, like we did during the first couple of years of the pandemic, is we step back and we yeah. observed and went, okay, does this make sense? Based on what I know to be true for myself, based on my values, based on my intuition, based on my commitment to truth, based on my commitment to surrounding myself with people of like mind, does this make sense? So yeah. critical thinking is also about understanding who you are, your values, what matters to you. Um, think about the, the term we're using, for example, for think tank is clarity equals velocity. If you're only taking the headlines and then you're basing your decisions on those headlines and you're thinking that those people, whether it's on the news or in the government, have your best interest at heart, mm -hmm. then that's a very small or shallow way of making decisions. There's a whole other plethora of things to consider when it comes to making a decision, whether it's on your health, on your finances, on any of your seven areas of life. And I think that's why it's so important that if you're doing a process and engaging in critical thinking, or you've got a big decision to, to make, is to look behind the curtain, to lift the curtain or, or to look behind or around the corner. My line is I need to look around the corner. I'm right, but it's usually five years in the future. So sometimes when I take a stand for something, or I've done a lot of critical thinking, and I speak my truth, I say what I see, and I see what I say, and I do and I try to be who I am, I can piss a lot of people off, because it generally goes against the mainstream narrative. Mm -hmm. And that's what I found that I really was, in a sense, rejected. I've got family members that won't talk to me. I've got close friends slash family members in the media, for example, who are, are so defensive into what the media is saying that we can't even have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So what I think is important is that we understand that critical thinking is a skill and it's mm -hmm. something that you can develop. And if you're noticing things aren't aligning, if what you see and what you hear and then what you're being asked to do, first of all, don't align with your values. Are you putting your trust in somebody you've never met or somebody who is just repeating the same thing over and over and over again to make you make a decision? How do you, you know, how do you walk it back? How do you say, okay, wait a sec, just let's just take a breath here and let's look at more and have more information and more input before we make a life changing decision, whether it's health, finances, family, moving across the country, we've got a couple of clients right now that are moving provinces, for example, that are trying to make decisions. And what we're doing, even in our shift program, and in some of the coaching that I'm doing, is I'm asking people to slow down. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look what's going on right now, and then make a decision. Well, I think there's a couple of things, you know, that you said in there that I want to be a little bit guarded around. I mean, critical thinking skills come into play, even if they're not life changing decisions that you're making. And they're just decisions that you're making in business day to day stuff, in your careers, in how you manage your team, you know, but these are skills. So critical thinking is a skill. It's a skill that you hone, you know, that you actually gain competence in over time. And then some of that comes with experience and age and all the, you know, the wisdom that comes sometimes with that making mistakes and or not getting the outcome that you're looking for. But certainly there are some characteristics of critical thinking skills that you need to have. And, you know, we talked about this, you know, pre-show, which, you know, we look at it and we say, well, first off, you actually have to be curious, which is to say, 
you know, before coming up with a coming to a conclusion or jumping to a conclusion, why don't we exercise some curiosity? You know, have you been paying attention to what's going on in the world around you? Maybe if it doesn't even see if it uh, seem to apply, are you being curious about things that are happening? That facts and trends that are going on that don't matter to you in the moment, but when it comes to being and being aware and having critical thinking, that you draw in some of those. Uh, some of that information and you use it in the future. So being curious is a really big part of it. Well, the curiosity piece, I think, is what got a little bit squished in the last little while, because if you got curious and you asked a question, you got shut down. Like, hmm. trust the science. That was my favorite one. Like, uh, well, wait, I'm curious. I actually took pharmacology in school. I took physiology. I have a question. I have a question. And that curiosity got me in trouble. So we have to be mindful of how we ask the questions because there's people that don't want to be questioned or challenged when it comes to the things that they have locked their mindset into. So if you're not willing or you're not able to explore like, alternative thought processes or a different way of looking at things, then it, it really can be challenging, especially if you if you are around people that don't have the same mindset as you. So I just invite people, if you are being curious, just make sure that you don't write off the options too soon. You may have information coming from other people that you, you didn't even expect. So be open, be curious, um, and, then, and then actually look for opposing views. That's the other thing about curiosity. What I love is my line, as you've heard many times, is what if I'm wrong? I mean, I know I'm right most of the time, but what if I'm wrong? So if there's an opposing view out there, I want to be challenged. I want to have those conversations. It doesn't have to be a fight. It has it doesn't have to be a confrontation. But curiosity is really a lost art right now. And I invite anyone who's listening to this podcast to open up your mind to be curious again so that as you get more information you don't have to be so locked into the decision you made when you were i don't know maybe in in fear or felt like you were under pressure or you'd been threatened i mean we have family members that were threatened to get the job for example so that they could travel and go see family in other countries like there was coercion involved and so that's another thing when it comes to critical thinking is there threats is there coercion involved and if there is maybe step back for a second well, I think that goes down to one of the other skills is around logical thinking. So there's, you know, we often say that we have to take the emotion out of it and try and get logical, look at the data and actually make decisions from that place of not being emotional. So, you know, I, anybody who knows me knows I can get pretty fired up about politics. No. And, what frustrates me about it all is that I look at the opposing views. I understand what their logic is and I don't agree with it, full stop. And, you know, I always come back to, you know, when you're running a country, it's not really a lot different than running a successful business. You've got budgets, you have to uh, appease people, you have to look after your team, you have to run a country like the business that it is. So we won't get into how to run a country, but the point is, is that when you have politicians who are not of that mindset, then you know it becomes spend away and i don't even mind paying taxes i just don't agree with how that tax money is being spent but this isn't really you know this isn't meant to be a conversation around politics other than to say when you're using critical thinking it's where it's hard to make sense of some of the political decisions that are being made because it is politics over policy so the policies don't make sense because they don't make sense. It was politics. It was to appease the squeaky wheel, for example. Then what happens around all of it when I talk about logic over emotion is it's hard when you've been when you know that you're being gaslit. You just know it. I mean, there's politicians, whoever they are, they're standing at the pulpit. They're literally lying through their teeth and you know it. And it's then hard to say, OK, I'm gone from being skeptical to being cynical. Right. Now, skepticism drives curiosity. Being skeptical is okay because you're questioning it. But then when you start to go the other way and all of a sudden you're being cynical, now you're being driven by emotion. And that is a tough one. And that's a skill that you have to then get back to, okay, let's just think about this logically. Let's take the cynicism out of this conversation and really look at this logically before I can make decisions. Now. 
I'll pass it to you, but I want to just say is that logical thinking and developing a skill means that you come back to what you and I talk about often on the show is that is of being self-aware. In other words, being aware of what you're thinking. So if you've shifted from being skeptical to cynical, are you aware of that? Because you just went from a mindset that can be logical and curious and critical thinking to being cynical, which drives emotion. So self-awareness is a big part of developing the skills of critical thinking. So when you think about crossing that line from into cynical, that is where self-awareness comes in. When I get cynical or if I get negative, for example, that's a, a cue. I have a trigger in my body that I can actually recognize. And that comes from having a certain level of self-awareness. And remember, self-awareness is not about knowing what other people are doing wrong yeah. and how much you know, you're self-aware and they're not. Yeah. It's about decisions and it's how our decisions are just informed by our values and our belief systems. And, and we, you know, we think about the word cognitive biases when we have bias based thinking and we then have to, we have to defend that. That's also cynical when you are so committed to defending your bias and all the information that you're getting, and you could be getting information that is logical, but you can't see it because you've also locked into your own bias. There's a feeling I get in my body and I don't know where it lives for you and your body, but I also know that it's connected to my ego. And we talk about our ego, not our amigo. When I lock onto an idea and I defend it and I fight for it, there's also some triggers that I get physically and emotionally that I go, you know what, I'm fighting for something that's, that's, not actually real. I'm right fighting instead of fighting for what's right in that moment. And that is a level of self awareness that I've had to train over the years. Because what happens when you reflect on your own beliefs, and you reflect on your choices, and then you take the time to go, how am I showing up? Are my belief systems and my cognitive biases overriding the logic overriding? Um, what I'm actually seeing that that critical thinking aspect, and the what if I'm wrong, or what if this isn't true? Until we're totally equipped to challenge our own belief systems, we can't make unbiased choices, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Well, you make a good point. And I think that when you look at a cognitive bias, that is really, if you don't have that self awareness to question some of your thinking, that cognitive bias is going to take you down the rabbit hole that serves you best. I mean, you're Absolutely. always going to see it's like, you know, it's when you buy the what, what the story is when you buy the, you know, the red Volkswagen and, you know, you haven't seen one for months and then you buy a red Volkswagen and everywhere you look, there is a red Volkswagen. That's so true. And, and, and so when it comes to cognitive uh, biases, that's exactly what happens when you are looking for things that support your argument that's what's going to be. But that takes the logic out of it because cognitive biases are generally driven by the emotion behind it, how you want it to work because you're seeing it as the path of least resistance or the way you want it to go. And you have a preconceived notion of what it should be. These are tough skills to develop in terms of critical thinking. But in terms of critical thinking, this is where you, you know, you might reach out to a friend, you might reach out to your dad, you know, you're going to reach out to somebody that can go, okay, Here's a conclusion I've come to. Here's a direction I want to go. This is my thought process. Tell me where I'm wrong. And having that kind of a conversation, having that uh, confidant, if you will, that you can actually have those kinds of conversations with that are also critical thinkers, by the way. I mean, you can get uh, opinions are cheap. They're what are they? You know, they're like fingers and toes. You know, everybody's got 20 of them, you know, so it's like <laughs> there's this thing you know, about that. So being able to have that self-awareness is an important part of it. And again, you know, when we're starting to look at gathering the information that we need, it's harder now than ever to confirm. Everything looks real. Everything is so much better because of technology, because of AI. I mean, look at the videos that are being produced and, you know, you go, wow, that, I mean, that's a video, that's real. And no, it's not, but it looks very real until you really lift the hood. And even then, if you're not in that space, if you don't have the tools, you you have no idea. Is that real or is that even 
him saying that. You know, you just don't know. And so when it comes to critical thinking through these times and in business, I think it's more difficult than ever, but it's more important than ever to be able to gather information, to analyze and really look at what that information represents to you along the lines of your critical thinking. And, you know, that sort of brings me to, to the process that I remember learning in school and then over the over time is is how I've been able to make decisions and to use my critical thinking. And I'm not saying that it's right all the time. I'm certainly not because my intuition, I also, you know, for the many years, there was some a time where I really shut down my intuition because I, the people around me didn't like what I was saying or they didn't like that I was saying something that was opposite to what the mainstream narrative was. And so I started to not trust myself. And I think that's one of the things we have to be very careful of and why I'm seeing there's certain conversations that aren't being had or people aren't finding trusted um, allies to have conversations where they can just discover and get into it and uncover what's going on and be curious and be scared and be um, and look at things a different way and be wrong. Because everybody's so, like you say, so polarized in one or the other or Hamas versus Israel versus Germany versus this sure. versus like the, all the, this war mentality is a reflection I think of what's going on for us personally and what I really love about these conversations is that what we want to offer what I want to offer is a space where people can be wrong they can be they can be right they can be curious they can be scared but without the emotion and when you can attach the emotion, step back, observe, and then get into the logical brain, there's actually a, a checklist that I've come up over, uh, come across over the years as to how do we know the information that we're going to start either sharing or communicating or thinking about, how do we know it's valid? And there's a checklist. Can I go over it or do you want to go through it? Or are we there yeah. Well, no, we can go. No, if you want to go through your check, checklist for sure. Yeah, let's 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 okay. do it. OK, well, it also means that you have to have a little bit more than just the headline mentality. You have to have the what's behind the curtain mentality. Right. So before I make decisions, this is the checklist that I go through is that I get some information. Just, just, just before you get to the chain, uh, I don't want to miss one point that I want to make here. Okay is that you know when we are built to be critical thinkers, when we're built to be a little bit skeptical, not cynical, when we're built to be curious and question what is the way it is or what is the norm, we're going to often experience judgment and we're going to often experience pushback. And being, you know, somebody's questioning us, questioning them. Like, who are you to question this? This is the way it's always been done. Or who are you to are question you, You're this? not a doctor. You're not, you're not. And he's, he's an expert and you're not an expert, whatever, in whatever industry it might be. The point is, is that, you know, you know and I think that's where often people shut down. Yeah. Some people will shut down because critical thinking does mean that at some point you're going to look at things and go, no, I don't, I don't want to call this. I'm going to, let me share the story. Can I share the yeah. story? dog food company. I think yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. So this is a true story, by the way. And there was a dog food company in the US. This was many, many years ago. But it was a, you know, I, I don't know if it was multi-billion, but it was a billion plus in sales. But they ran into a real time. They had been growing and had been really awesome and things were really cooking. And then all of a sudden they started going through this period of time where they would plateau and then it would pull back and then they would plateau and they would pull back. And so the owner of the business was, you know, he's losing his mind. And, you know, first thing he did was, you know, it's got to be marketing. It's the marketing uh, department's fault that it's we're having fault. these challenges. They're doing it all wrong. And so he goes in and he fires basically the whole marketing department. And so a new marketing company comes in or a new marketing department comes in, they lead the way and the, boy, for the next couple of months, boom, things are going great. Awesome. It's very, very cool. And then sure enough, all of a sudden sales drop off again. And then he goes, well, can't be the marketing guys because they crushed it. It's got to be the sales guys. The sales guys just aren't working hard enough. And so he walks in, fires all the sales guys, brings in a whole new team, gets a whole new sales manager. Sure enough, boom, sales go through the roof for two or three months. And then the next thing you know, wah, 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 they start to peel back. 
Well, he's then going, okay, I'm calling a company meeting. This is enough of this. And so he calls a company meeting and he's explaining all this. And, you know, he's going, I'm going to, you know, lay everybody off. I'm going to start from scratch if I have to. And in amongst the crowd, and nobody's saying anything, by the way, everybody's sitting there. At this there. point, they're terrified, I'm sure. They're terrified. They don't want to get fired. They don't want to get laid off. And there's one new guy. He's a young guy. He's a grad of somewhere. And he looks up and he goes, the dogs don't like the food. And everybody goes, what? What are you talking about? We did a billion dollars. He goes, yeah, but you changed the recipe, you know, a couple of years ago and sales started to go great. And then they fall off. They go great. Then they fall off. Every time you do a marketing initiative, they go great. Then they fall off because they're not coming back to buy a second, third, fourth, fifth bag of food. It's not become their food of choice. The dogs don't like the food. As long, Regardless of how good the marketing is, eventually it wears off because the dogs didn't like the dog food. The dog didn't like the dog food. And so critical so thinking means that you slow down long enough to lift the hood instead of looking for blame. Mm -hmm logically, not emotionally approach the problem. And I love that story, by the way, because, you know, over the years, it, <laughs> I've looked at my own businesses and others' businesses and go, yeah, I, I don't think the dogs like the food. I mean, that's the <laughs> bottom line. So anyways, we go through that. So the point is, is that's a logical way of thinking as opposed to, and it becomes more rational as opposed to firing the marketing department and firing the sales department. So these are critical thinking skills that it takes time to develop that brings and starts with self-awareness. Okay, now. You know, your... just wait, just don't step over this. You know, the best part of that story for me is that it was a young guy, probably new, not attached to the whole history of the company, looked at probably a spreadsheet and went, there's a cycle here. Maybe the, maybe, maybe the dogs don't like it. Like, and it's <laughs> such an, it's like Occam's, Rager, uh, Occam's razor, right? It's like the simplest answer is always the right one. <laughs> Seems that way, doesn't it? Right. Okay, so you're going to do a critical thinking checklist. Is that what this is? Well, yeah, it's it's an informal checklist. It, it, you know, it's just it, it means it takes a little bit of time before I make decisions. There's things that I that I go through, and I've gotten quite quick at it. Um, but I see, you know, I can only go back over the last you know three years as to what's going on, and I think going forward. Um, at, at our rate meetings this week, and I don't know when people are going to be listening to this podcast, but we're going to do a completion exercise, but I'm going to do it completely different. And I'm going to flip it in a way that we're going to be using critical thinking in not just in goal setting moving forward, but taking some information as to the decisions you've made in the last three years based on the information you had and were those information sources that you made your decisions on, were they trustworthy? So that's the first thing. Was the information source trustworthy? And right now, the trusted media, for example, or the mainstream media, the things that we used to go to, um, to, to get our information has lost a lot of their swag. They've lost a lot of credibility in the world. So even the information that people are getting right now from the, the mainstream media or from your six o'clock news, the question is, is that trustworthy? Look at A, follow the money. You know, oh, follow the money. In our in Canada, our CBC is funded by the 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 Liberals. They all are. All of our mainstream media is. That's it. Oh, so, so is it trustworthy? Unless you're maybe you're a liberal supporter. No disrespect if you are, <laughs> but is that information trustworthy or is it biased? Or can you look underneath to other people? Who do you follow? Who are your trusted colleagues? Who are your peers? Who, what, what publications do you read? Do you only read the ones that are recommended by the mainstream media? Are you getting alternate information? Are you getting blog, reading blogs and websites? Are you coming to Mindset Matters and listening? Or like, where are you getting your information? The second thing is, is the, is the information up to date? Is it current? You know, I was thinking about the other day as I, I went back and listened to some of the um, Everyday Millionaire podcasts uh, back early in, because I was really trying to say, okay, how far we've come, because we can't tell a lot of times, if we're being successful, if we're, if we're truly on the right path, if we don't go back every once in a while and check in. And I listened to the Mark Moss podcast. And he, it was such a good podcast. But what I, I didn't realize because it was early in the in the 2020, 2021, what you guys were talking about was crucial to that time. But I wouldn't make decisions today 
in end of 2023 based on that podcast that I listened to in 2021, even though it was really good. So is your information up to date? And how do you determine that? What I learn right now is I'm looking like if I'm scrolling some of the news sites or on Facebook trying to get up to date information, I'm noticing the date on things. And I think because like you said earlier, what's happening with the liberals is that they got C18 and C36 and all these laws that don't allow current and up-to-date news is that the news that I'm getting is from 2018, 2021. It's mm. not current. Well, you got nothing coming in from the US. So that nothing, right? Too, so right? honestly, yeah. I in China this week, all I did was I, I put my VPN on and started to try to search and source different levels of information. I want to know what's going on in the world, but I don't want to listen to Canadian media. So it's A, it's not trustworthy to me and and it's not up to date. The other one, the next one for me is I appreciate, for example, news sources or people that I listen to, whether it's a podcaster, are they getting direct criticism? Because if they're not getting criticism, then they're doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know when I'm being criticized or I'm getting feedback that I don't like, it's because I'm on the right track. I so, love trolls. I love, right? love trolls. You're the <laughs> most hilarious. Yeah, when it comes I love to that. It cracks me up. <laughs> because if you're not getting direct criticism, then you're not taking a stand. Doesn't mean you totally. have to be, I don't have to be a bitch about it. I don't have to, you know, put my stake in the ground and go, this is it. This is the only way. I don't do that. But if I get direct criticism, I go, oh, there's something for me to think about. Especially if it's if it's constructive, you know. I love just that. Yeah. Totally. Troll have you thought that. about this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The other one is that does the information have um, errors in it. Is it wrong? Is it, does it have inaccuracies? Are the dates wrong? Is the, um, quote unquote science incorrect? I mean, the minute somebody said the science has changed, that's when I you shut get, down. You get skeptical, not cynical. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I get skeptical. Thank you. When people say things like that and I go, you know what, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I know that science doesn't, science is ever evolving. And when you say this is the science or trust the science, and I know science is going to change. And then they say, oh, the science changed. I go, wait, what? So those kinds of things will trigger. And to me, that allows me to take to the next level. And then I start looking for evidence. So I start, this is the next part. So it's, is the source trustworthy? Is the information up to date? Can they handle or have they received direct criticism? Are there errors or inaccuracies in those things or inconsistencies? That's the thing that's really bugged me over the last three years is the inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. And if people that, oh, yeah, it's this one day and it's this the next, and they think that's normal, that's a problem for me. That's not critically thinking. The next one is, there, if, is there evidence? Do you have evidence to support the information that you have? If you have evidence, and it doesn't mean just look only in the biases, it's seriously, you know what, I know I'm not a scientist, I know I'm not a doctor, but I know how to use the internet and I know how to read. So based on that, I can also, I'm smart enough to make my own conclusions based on the information I'm gathering. If you aren't gathering information, then that's a clue that you're only being fed technically misinformation. The next one is, is the information subjective or biased? And when I listen, honestly, because <laughs> I've been traveling a lot and I'm trying to, you know, make, make sure that I'm, I'm listening and I'm following and I want to be, you know, make sure that I'm keeping myself healthy and safe, et cetera. But then you go to an airport and all you see is CNN and Fox News and you go, wow, these biases are so clear. And then you watch, okay, 60 or 80% of the people over here or 20% of the people over here. When you're being driven by subjectiveness or biased information, it becomes opinion. And that's what people have forgotten is that I used to love reading opinion pieces in, in the journal. I love that because it was the person's opinion. It wasn't a fact. But what it did was it, it really got my juices flowing because, wow, I, I would look at it differently. And now you have a line that um, when you look at these some of these um, – um, they were called editorials or, or the opinion uh, writers in the newspaper. They become sensationalists. Is that what your line is? They become from one. <laughs> no, to one. they go from journalist to opinionist to sensationalist. <laughs> there exactly. is, I don't, you know, I, I, it's not fair. I mean, in the, in the actual definition of the word journalism that all qualifies, but you know, to me, 
I always think about investigative journalism and to me that's the only real journalism, but they don't do that anymore. So you go from journalist to opinionist to sensationalist. It seems to be the thing that happens with a lot of, you know, out of work mainstream media types. So I know that's a judgment, but really I also, it helps me decide who I'm going to read and what I'm going to listen to. I love that. It's so true. Um, (laughs) Sensationalist. I have some very respected, um, used to be columnists that I followed in sport, for example, um, and in community, different areas when we were in Edmonton. And they're so smart. And I still follow them today. And what I'm noticing, the ones that I followed back then, I'm still following because there was an element of critical thinking in everything that they wrote. And they were risking speaking their truth, whether they thought it was going to be accepted by the mainstream or not, they were willing to do that. And what's really sad for me right now is some of those people are being, they're being, um, I don't know, what's what's the word, smothered or Maybe. muffled. They're not allowed to to really dig in because then they get fired or they get um they get canceled. Yeah, I get it. but I mean, these it's the independents that can have an opinion and aren't as attached to it but then how so do you find we're, those we're way over by the way on our oh. on our podcast timing and oh, wow. so do you still have a thing on your list no that's the last one the last one of course is making sure that anything that appears to be invalid or irrelevant just don't include it like if if it's somebody's opinion or, or you find that people get you get sucked down a rabbit hole or it's just a I don't know, time filler conversation. I'm not that person. I I tend to shut it down when it becomes irrelevant. Um, But that actually kind of pisses people off when it comes to that, because that can lead to gossip. But that's the last one is just to make sure that it's, it's a, it's what you're talking about and thinking about is relevant and current and that you can be, it can be supported. And then you just take it to the next level. Well, I think when it comes to critical thinking, you know, we're wrapping it around this thing called how do you make decisions and, and, to make choices, right? You know, there's an interesting, I've had uh, a few friends that are really, you know, they've got history and they are looking at what's going on with Hamas and Israel and uh, what that war means and what does it look like? And, you know, there is a lot of emotion around it. And they've asked me a few times, you know, a couple of times now I've been kind of, what's your thoughts and what do you think about this? And I go, I have to be honest with you. I don't have an opinion. I don't, I'm not going to pick a side because I don't know enough about it. I really don't. It's not a, it's, I have no, I've not been in over the years. I've not, I haven't been to Jerusalem. You know, I haven't been to Israel. You know, like I, I don't have an opinion of it that way. And, you know, right now we're hearing lots about Russia and uh, Ukraine and funding Ukraine and uh, what is Russia doing and Ukraine's losing the war. And there's these, you know, Zelensky is a thief and a crook and he's a this and he's a that and a Putin's a this and that. And I get all of that, by the way. But do I really have an opinion on it? Now, if some of the critical thinking that I'm doing uh, is going to be, and I and some of it is, based on what I think the outcomes of the wars are creating, or, you know, and, and not who's going to win the war, but more about what is the outcome that is being caused by the war, that's critical thinking. But I don't have an opinion Really, I don't have an opinion. Is Ukraine right and Russia wrong? Ah, you know, listen, I've got Ukrainian friends who are, of course, they're all about Ukraine. And I have uh, acquaintances and people I know that are going, no, Ukraine is like they're way out of their, their, they should never have even stepped into this. So my point is, I don't have a view of it. I really, really don't. And when we think about critical thinking, there are places that we just go, you know something? I don't know. I don't need an opinion of this. My opinion of any of it isn't going to make a difference. Oh, you know what? I think that could be another podcast is that what you what you just said and how I'm interpreting that. And I think this is what is really important for our listeners and for the people that are in our, our sphere of influence is that we've looked at all those sides. And the truth is, we don't have enough information to have an opinion that no. is going to matter. What we do is we support people in creating a mindset that aligns with their values so that they can move forward. And if they are compelled and they do have enough information, they've gone through their checklist and they have, um, they move past their biases and they know what they are, then that is what we support is the choices that they make. And I think that's, what's really different about what we're doing is oh. we're saying, okay, let's look at, 
all the different sides. Let's make sure that we're aligned with our values because we still have to live post-war. We still have to live in what's going on right now and live our best lives and take care of ourselves and our families and make sure that we're doing everything we can. And I really got that in China this week is that, you know what, there's a lot of stories going on about China right now, but it was a really great experience. The athletes stayed in their bubble. They had fun. We, uh, you know, we won. There's things and we were in China. And there's a lot of stuff. So are we staying true to ourselves? Are we doing our moving through our biases? Are we living our best lives? Are we not paralyzed? Let's not be paralyzed, but we see on the news and then move forward with our lives the best we can. And on that note, thanks, Stephanie. Hey, that was fun. Mm -hmm.